Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, in this session, we are going to learn the canny edge detector. We have been learning about the edge detection methods and in the past few sessions, I have explained you clearly about the edge detection techniques, the fundamentals of edges, uh, how did the Swobel edge detector work, Previt edge detector work, all these things we have clearly seen. And this session, it is going to be completely about uh, the canny edge detector, which is one of the most important and uh, most complex edge detectors actually uh, available in the market. So we are going to understand that. And please uh, do one very important thing, have a paper and make a note of the steps that we are talking about because it is not like one step is there and that's all it is over for the edge detection. There are series and sequence of steps that you need to do towards understanding the canny edge detector. Uh, this is very simple if you understand, it's very complex if not. We'll go step by step. What is the first step? The first step is to convert the input image to a grayscale image. That's what I have done right now in front of you. I have taken my regular traditional input image. I converted it to a grayscale image and we can do it using MATLAB or we can do it using Python. Uh, I mean open uh, CV or anything. Just convert it to a, a grayscale image. This is the first step. What is the second step? The second step is to operate with the Gaussian blur. So this is an operator. It helps tremendously in removing the noise in the input image. And the noise removed is very important because only when the noise is removed, it can be processed further. And for the entire process to be flawless, this operator is to be used. The Gaussian blur has to be sent over the image that you have converted as a grayscale image. This is the second step. The third step is very important, intensity gradient calculation. What is it? I have taught you Sobel filter. Sobel filter is all the same here I'm going to use. I need to send the image into the Sobel filter and I need to collect the output. That's it is what is needed here in this step. Sudden intensity change is the edge and intensity change is what we are looking into and we are going to take the Sobel operator for getting this edges detected and the Sobel gradient is what is going to be presented to you for the next step. Now the first step was very simple. What is it? We converted to grayscale. Second step, Gaussian blur. What is the third step? Operate on it with the Sobel filter. We know what is Sobel X, Sobel Y and we have derived all those. And what we will get finally is, we will get gradient approximation G as square root of GX square plus GY square. I have taught you this in my Sobel edge detector session. If you do not understand it, please go through it once again so that you can understand it. It's a complete process. That itself will take about 15 minutes if I start explaining it right now. So better you uh, go there and learn it. Now, G is calculator. Now, what is the next step? G is nothing but the gradient approximation. The next step is to find out the edge direction. Edge direction can be found out through theta equal to inversion of tan GY by GX. This is the formula that we are going to use and this will get you the theta which is nothing but the edge direction. The first step conversion into grayscale. Second step you are using a filter to make sure that noises are removed. The third step you are detecting edge and you are finding out gradient approximation as well as the edge direction. Edge direction can be found out with the simple formula. The third step is done. What is the fourth step? It's very important so I request your complete attention. What is it? It's very simple. It's called non-maximum suppression. Non-maximum suppression. You are going to suppress something which is not a maximum. That's it. You are going to suppress something which is not a maximum. But it's not as easy as I told you. We are going to go step by step. Alright. Uh, now in this process, uh, we need to... Uh, this, this is all about... This process is all about getting uh, the edges from... Uh, the getting the right edges from the available image and getting the perfect edges which are definitely edges is what we need to retrieve from this process. Now we have the edge detection edge detection done already in fact through the Sobel detector but that is not sufficient. So what we have from the Sobel result is the edge direction and the gradient. So the edge direction is available with us. Remember the direction of the edges is available. Now the next step is to relate the identified edge direction to the direction that can be sketched in the image and ideally it is about predicting how the movement of edges could happen. I repeat, understand, I have got the direction already available with me. This direction, how it goes, how it is going to go further has to be detected. Now we are going to have a 3 cos 3 matrix as a reference here and it is visualized as colors. You can see that 2 red is there, 2 greens, 2 blues, 
two yellows and center is one always focus is on center now what we are going to do is we are going to learn how the direction movements can be it can be this way north to south it can be this way it can be east to west this way or it can be diagonals this way or this way see that north to south east to west diagonals these three are the possible directions now the center cell is again the region of interest we are not supposed to touch it and it's going to be the same we did not operate on it now there are only four possible directions i just told you that it can be 0 degree 45 degree 90 degree or 135 degrees remember 0 45 90 or 130 i know it is difficult for you to understand it at this level so what i have drawn is i have drawn a semicircle and i have coated colors there you can see that yellow red blue and green now any edge any edge which comes under yellow range is set to zero if the value i mean if the angle uh, the direction is in the yellow range which means 0 to 22.5 or 157.5 to 180 degrees will be set to zero this yellow range is set to zero any edge which comes under the green range what is green here the green range is here which means 22.5 to 67.5 all these are set as 45 degrees that's it very simple now next one any range any edge which is coming under the blue range is set to 90 degree what is blue 67.5 to 112.5 and similarly and this is a mistake here i made it a mistake it has to be 90 similarly i have got red range here so 112.5 to 157.5 is all set as 135 degrees that's it this is how we approximate this is how we bring it properly into picture now once it is done the input image which i have taken see this this is the input image that i have taken this image will become like this this is how we get it because the direction movements all the four directions the approximation all this picture will come into play now what is the last step the edge directions are all determined and we need to find the non-maximum suppression process what is non-maximum suppression it is very simple we are going to suppress pixels to zero which cannot be considered as an edge simple there are some pixels which cannot be edges and we are going to suppress them to zero that's it once we do it we'll get this kind of result which is actually clumsy we need to further process it to get the nice result that we expect so what is it thresholding is the work that we are going to do actually we do double thresholding here what is it it's again simple we have done all the process till now did we get a right result is this result very encouraging no we have some problem the result is not revealing the edges properly the result might not show edges as edges or it might show non edges as edges so i still have that query in my mind so what do we do we go for double upper, double thresholding what is double thresholding i'll have a higher value 0.8 for example i'll have a lower value for example 0.2 now see that any pixel with the value above 0.8 will be taken as a stronger edge any pixel with the value lower than 0.2 will be taken as not at all an edge and it will be set to zero finished i have got 0.8 higher 0.2 lower anything above 0.8 is called as stronger edge anything below 0.2 is called as non edge and it will be assigned to zero now what if in between 0.2 and 0.8 this is a very important question right they are called as weak edges and we need to process them and edge tracking is a mechanism with final cleansing will get you all this done clearly and we can get the edges detected for the canny edge detector nicely and now what do we do very simple we can call the weak edges connected to the strong edges which means i have got a weak edge which is next to a strong edge it can be called as a strong edge and we can retain them weak edges which are not connected which are not next to the strong edges will be removed that's it this is called the edge tracking and final cleansing has to be done the final cleansing is nothing but all the weak edges are to be completely removed now get the result and this is what the detected edge using the canny edge detector i hope i have made it very simple in this session if you have any queries please go ahead and ask it in the comment section i'll be able to answer it thank you very much for following the channel and the content if you like the channel please subscribe you can refer it to your friends as well thank you